Hello and welcome. Today I'll be discussing the 1963 Philips audio cassette and how it changed society's view of appropriate use of music. The audio cassette is basically a plastic enclosed reel of sequential magnetic tape which allows the user to play and record audio. To fully appreciate the impact the cassette had, we must explore the context of its creation, which requires us to delve into the history of recorded sound. Thomas Edison devised the cylinder phonograph in 1877, which recorded sound by etching grooves into a wax cylinder. Emil Berliner applied this etching idea to discs in 1889, and full-scale records started being sold in America in 1892, not long before Veldemir Poulsen created magnetic recording in 1898. Records were the main source of sound reproduction until the mid-20th century. However, despite this dominance of the market, some still saw the potential of magnetic recording and expanded Poulsen's design. In 1927, Fritz Flumer decided instead of Poulsen's magnetic wire, he would use paper tape coated with iron oxide, leading to the development of the magnetophone K1. By the end of World War II, magnetic tape had reached America and cost more than three times a vinyl record, and recording equipment was still out of the reach of the average consumer. Then, in 1963, following relentless waves of unreliable magnetic tape products, Philips released its inexpensive compact audio cassette, which would play and record sound on the same device. What we can gather from this is that the context of the cassette's creation was one with very little self-recording freedom for the end user, and a top-down hierarchy of vinyl music distribution, which is what made the cassette so revolutionary. Now that people could record their own sounds, they had a new degree of control over media, threatening its commoditized nature. During the 1980s, there was a series of ad campaigns and lawsuits to try and stop people recording music on cassettes, but to no avail. With the cassette being better in many ways and being the only mainstream medium that supported users recording freedom, it was only a matter of time before it overtook the dated vinyl methods. Society continued to shape the cassette to better enhance its recording features. The 1970s saw the Dolby B-type background noise reduction cassettes, and later in the 80s the standard chromium dioxide tape cover was replaced by cobalt alloy to provide better response at higher frequencies. This love of newfound freedom heavily influenced modern contemporary technology as medium producers tried to accommodate society's new lust for self-publication, much to the dismay of recording companies. These days people exploit this freedom, making piracy common over multiple formats and data types. It seems the audio cassette brought on a war between those companies that create media and mediums who distribute it. But those media producers must consider what time has taught us. They must embrace new mediums or be consumed by them. Thank you, and I hope you will now agree that the audio cassette was a catalyst to a societal mentality change to the appropriate use of music.